guys thanks so much for clicking on the video my name is leah and let's recap and review real housewives of orange county this is season 18 episode 14 and girl miss fancy pants <laughs> You know you my girl, but I'm going to have to give you your lashes in this review. Because you my girl, Heather. But, uh, but let's get into it. So y'all know sometimes before we get into it, we get a little spicy over here and talk about the things that catch my eye that I feel are spicy enough to talk about before we get into the review. So first up is the reunion. So it looks like they filmed the reunion last Sunday. And they also released the seating chart. So Andy is in the middle, on like he always is. On the right-hand side, it, it goes Tamra, Emily, Heather, then Alexis. On the left-hand side, it goes Shannon, Gina, Jen, and Katie. And I don't really like this. For starters, I do agree that Shannon should be first chair. But I also feel like Jen should be switched with Gina. So in my mind, it would be Shannon, Jen, Gina, then Katie. And then on the right hand side, I think it's OK that Tamara is first chair. But I also feel like Emily and Heather should be switched. So then it should go Tamara, Heather, Emily, then Alexis. But we know Alexis and Emily got into it. And I think they put Heather in the middle to create a buffer. Same with Jen and um Jen being the same buffer as Heather, like keeping Gina and Katie because, you know, it might get heated. I do want to play this clip for you guys where Andy was talking on his podcast about the reunion and he actually said it was calm and they came to a lot more resolutions than he actually um, thought would happen. Day. We did our, I, I don't know when we've ever shot a reunion on Sunday. It just so happened. <clears throat> that that was the day that we could all do it. I guess we did shoot the OC reunion on Sunday. It was very, we did what we had to do. I think people will be surprised. I think people will be surprised by what I liked. It was very calm. We worked mm. through a lot of things, okay. but it wasn't people ripping each other's faces off. Good. And I think when you see the last few episodes of Orange County, which get especially heated, mm. I do think we needed to... That's how it should be. The show should end crazy and then resolve. At yes, the that's kind of what we did. I have to say, Alexis, Jesus Jugs was there mm. for part of it. That was not calm. That was not calm. That was, that was very... I bet. It was a lot. So I actually agree with Andy's co-host where he speaks about, you know, you want things to be super crazy but then come to an end to have a resolution. And I agree. I want there to be some type of like into the story, close the book so we can move forward type energy. And it seems like maybe that might happen. It is interesting that he said, Andy said it's like the calmest reunion he's been to. So I wonder why everybody was so calm, <laughs> you know. Also, I do believe Andy when he speaks about Alexis being extra because I don't think Alexis is handling the backlash well she keeps talking about like the truth will come out everybody will see but it's like girl the more the season continues the more you look bad and I'm not saying she but she should be receiving as much backlash in the sense of like people shouldn't be going out their way like DMing the lady like hateful messages and all of that stuff like you can have your opinions I say keep it on the blogs keep it on your Twitter page keep it in your group chats you know keep it on the YouTube streets but don't go directly to these people you know and I think she's been struggling with people's commentary about her because I don't think she expected everybody to be on her you know what this badly because when I tell you the people are on her you know her ASS they are on it okay Hey. Continuing with the reunion, it seems like Tamara might not have had a bad reunion because she um, posted the Miley Cyrus clip when she's in that onesie with the mouth, um, the lips emoji, where she's like, they tried to kill. They tried to kill your favorite, you know, B-I-T-C-H. They tried to kill me. <laughs> That is such a hilarious clip. And um, Tamara captioned it by saying, and that's a wrap. Hashtag R-H-O-C. So it might not have been that bad for um, Tamara. And with Andy saying that it was a calm reunion and people talk things out, girl, it might be a bunch of tears and maybe a little bit of screaming. 
So continuing with Tamra, I saw this the other day and it was posted by No Smoke No More. And it is an excerpt from an interview that Tamra did with US Weekly. So I just I'm going to read this portion. It says this Tamra Judge talks about what it's been like watching the season. And so Tamra goes on to say this. It's been a season that I've watched where I've gone. Really? This is how it's coming out. I'm very shocked in the sense that, you know, here we have Shannon, whose drinking has been talked about for 10 years since she's been on the show gets a DUI hit and run hurts herself goes to jail and for some reason she's the victim in my world I just don't understand it but then if I was a viewer watching the show I would think the same because she's really good at playing victim and poor me hashtag RHOC source US weekly So I am curious to know when this interview was given. Like when I saw it, I was like, okay, was this done after the reunion or was this done before? Because Tamara did say on two T's and a pod that she was not going into the the reunion scared to like stand on what she said throughout the reunion and like just come there to apologize to uh, to Shannon. She said she was coming ready for whatever. So if this was her energy going into the reunion, it makes sense. But if this was after the reunion and Andy said you guys were able to hash things out I was like what did y'all then I'm looking at Andy like then what did y'all really hash out if she still feels this way like there's there still seems to be a lack of like empathy and compassion for Shannon but hey so I think that's all I want to talk about with y'all so let's get into this review talk about this episode so it opens up and we have heather gina shannon and jen going to get mammograms i guess when you turn 40 you're supposed to start to get them a lot regularly or they're part of like your exam and so pretty much um gina's 40 and she's kind of nervous to do them so heather was like hey we can all go together then you have jen who says she found a lump and she hasn't really like going to any other appointments it seems like things come up and she hasn't told any of her kids about it the only person that knows about it is Ryan because he noticed the lump so now she's kind of nervous and scared but she's like this needs to be taken care of Shannon lets us know it's been 10 years almost since she done got a mammogram and then Heather says two people in her family recently got diagnosed with breast cancer so she's trying to take the situation a lot more seriously and she feels like preventative health is a lot better than like proactive health and I said true so while they're sitting there you have Gina asking Shannon, hey, did you send Alexis that text that you read for us at the tea party? And Shannon said, yes, I did. And then Jenna's like, yeah, girl, and me and Katie were with her at her house when she got the text message. She kicked us out. She said she was done. She was having a full-blown meltdown. And Gina is like salivating at, at the drama, like, ooh. And Heather is like, okay and so they were like well did she respond to your text message Shannon and Shannon is like yes so they showed the text message so Alexis said this she said hey Shannon Bedore since you're hosting this amazing trip to Europe with our friends surely you can scrounge up the funds to pay my future husband his $75,000 that you borrowed and owe him safe travels and she does like the heart hands emoji and Shannon is like your future husband and y'all only been together for four months and then Shannon starts to yell in the doctor's office she was like girl I've been with that I was with that man for four years like what are you talking about and then Jen is like you know I really think she thought she was coming to London and Shannon's like how how could she think that she's called me a liar she said I've been doing this and be doing that she has she's been getting into this lawsuit that doesn't really like it's nothing linked to her but she's in it somehow and then she sends me this yeah no I made the right decision and one of you guys reached out to me and shouts out to you and you hit me in my dms where you pretty much said that allegedly at around the time of them going to London, Alexis did not know that she was supposed to be a friend of, she was still under the impression that she was supposed to be a full-time housewife. And I can kind of see that. My only gripe with that is like, I remember when her and Emily got into it, Emily said, shut up, Alexis, you're just a friend. Like basically telling Alexis, girl, you're not even a full-time housewife. You're just a friend, know your place. But then I'm also like, well, did Alexis really not know? 
Like, did she really not know? Because we do know that sometimes the girls will film and be in mind thinking that they are filming to, for like a full time position. And then when everything comes and it's time for them to like edit and like, you know, create the show and morph all the scenes together, people start to get demoted. That's what happened to Jazzy and Kiarna on Real Housewives of Potomac. Kiarna, I think, was just supposed to be a friend of, she was supposed to just be Wendy's friend, but she got promoted to a full time housewife. And then Jazzy, who is Mia's friend, who we got introduced on episode one, she was supposed to be a full time housewife, but she got demoted to a friend of. And normally they don't let the girls know until it's time for them to like get to the end of the season and they sign the contracts and everything. So it's giving that maybe Alexis really didn't know that she was a friend of at this point. And the confirmation was, hey girl, you not going on this trip because a full-time cast member pretty much said, if she come on this trip, I'm not going and she's more valuable than you. And that, that would to me explain why her meltdown was so bad because <laughs> it wasn't making sense. So the girls go do their mammograms. We meet Dr. Lopez. Everybody seems to be okay, except Heather is kind of scared because the doctor tells her that she does have some dense breast tissue and that the density, I think, is like 39%. And for her um, age range, it should be in 12. But that doesn't necessarily mean that she is more receptive of getting like breast cancer. It just means that like if she does have breast cancer, it's a lot more hard to detect because of her breast being so dense shannon's fine gina's fine and em not emily um jen when they check the lump the lump is fine so jen is breathing a sigh of relief we then hear the girls saying yay and it was heather and gina in the room together and they're like yay so shannon and jen assumed that everybody was okay so so the girls are like in a huddle, everyone's sharing their results, but no one asks Heather like, hey, how did yours go? People just assume that she's okay because they heard the yay in the doctor's office when Heather and Gina were um, doing the screening. And Heather kind of felt some type of way because she was like, well, ain't nobody asked me if I was cool. We just gonna all assume that we're all good. And sometimes it does, you do want people to just be like, hey, you good? Even if you even if you are good, you just want to know that people care. And I think Heather feels like she doesn't really know where she stands in this group because last season everybody was like ganging up on her and down her throat. And now this season, her and Gina aren't that close, which I'm like, girl, that's a blessing in disguise because I always felt like Gina was an opportunist. And then it's like she... She's kind of cool with everybody, but not really. So I just think she's in this like awkward spot. But I'll, I, but the same thing can go as like closed mouths don't get fed. Like, like I said about Emily, if you were feeling uncomfortable, speak up. If you wanted people to know how you're doing, speak up. And sometimes that is hard for people to speak up because you don't want to be perceived a certain way. But if you want people to care about you, then just tell them, just, just say it. Sometimes it's easy. Just say so. We get these scenes of everyone packing up to go to London. We then finally settle on the scene of Tamara and Eddie. And so she's packing up her bags and Eddie's like, so how was it when you saw Jen? And Tamara was like, you know, at Shannon's tea party, I walked in. I apologized because I didn't want to make it all about us because we're at Shannon's party. And Jen's response to me was very much like, okay, we'll talk. And she's like, okay, we'll talk. She was like, when I see her, I see her. It's not really, it is what it is. And so then uh, she keeps calling Eddie a bit. No, she keeps calling Ryan a bitch. And then Eddie was like, just promise me you won't argue with no more little bitches but then I'm looking at Eddie as like you're lame because did you tell your wife that you hugged that man you hugged um Jen and you dapped up Ryan like if you didn't tell her about that then why are you speaking anyway sir like what's going on Eddie what's going on we then see Ryan on the phone with um Jen because Jen is packing as well and she's just showing him all the clothes she's trying to bring and then Ryan is like how are you going to deal with C and Tamara and she's like you know what I don't know and I really don't care I, and she tells uh, Ryan about like you know the apology and Ryan is like that's just what Tamara does that's like her playbook she apologizes and then she does it all over again and then she acts like a juvenile drunken teenager when you get into it with her and they flash back to when she got into it with them at Katie's house. And Jen is just over Tamara. She's just like, this is what Tamara does. You get into it with her, y'all argue, y'all slightly make up, and then you think you okay, and then she play in your face again. And at this point, I don't, I don't care to go down that road with her no more, and I don't want to. I'm over it. And 
Jen is over. See the ladies all make it to London. Uh, you know, everybody's in good spirits. I've never been to London, but I've always heard that like the weather is like Seattle weather, like very like rainy and foggy, but some like sunny days, which is interesting to me. And so um, they make it there. They have a really nice hotel. They're all cracking jokes in the Sprinter because they see this really handsome like doorman that has like a salt and pepper beard. They get to the hotel and they go to one of the suites and it's a really nice suite and it's Shannon's suite. So then one of the um, staff workers comes over and it's a bowl full of like key cards to the room. And so everyone's supposed to pick a key card to figure out what room they're going to be in. I don't like that. Girl, I want to know what room I'm going to be in and I want to pick who I'm going to room with. I don't play them games. And so... Shannon, Shannon doesn't pick, but Gina is staying with Shannon in her room. Then Jen, Emily, and Katie are staying in a suite together. And then the other suite is where Heather and Tamara are staying. So everyone's kind of good. They all go to their rooms. Shannon ends up coming to everybody's room and gifting them like British bucket hats. And then also a $595 Burberry scarves. Tamara is like, girl, why are you gifting us $595 Burberry scarf, sis. Like, you've been complaining about not having the money to play John. And I said, no, Tamara. Shannon never said she didn't have the money to pay John. She said she didn't want to pay him. That's two totally different things. I have the money. I don't want to pay you versus I don't have the money and I don't want to pay you. Two totally different things. You're you're purposely misconstruing that on purpose. We then see everybody leave their rooms and they go like sightseeing on the town. They don't really want to wear the hats, but Shannon wants them to. They look like total tourists with the hats and the scarves. And then they ride this boat ride where it's, it reminds me of when people go boat riding in the Everglades. And, and, and it's really going. That, that boat was smacking that water. And like everybody is like lowered. Emily is having the most fun on the boat you can see that Shannon and Heather is like this is not fun I don't like it I don't like it it's not fun I don't like it I'm not liking this and so they finally um get back to their rooms and everyone's supposed to get ready for dinner we see this moment between Tamara and Heather where Tamara brings up the Jeff Lewis podcast or Heather brings up the Jeff Lewis podcast so what's her name Shannon was on the Jeff Lewis podcast and Heather is starting to feel used by Shannon because Jeff was asking Shannon questions and Shannon was kind of giving answers that Heather was like, that's not what you told me. So Jeff is like, well, did you ever ask for a loan? Did he ever give you a loan? And then Shannon said, well, there was one time where like I needed money and I was like, well, I have a boyfriend. You could give me money. And I was and he was like, no, just go get a loan. And so, um, What's her name? So Heather is like, well, did you get a loan or didn't you get a loan? Then Shannon says something about a promissory note being sent to her by John. And so she's like something like uh, Heather's just like things are not like they're starting not to add up. And now I'm questioning whether or not you came to my room to actually have a real heart to heart with me or you were using me. And so they also we also see Lewis ask um, Shannon about the accident where he's just like, well, the DUI where he's just like, so did it bother you or did it concern you that he did not come and check up on you? And she was like, no, no, it didn't. And so Heather is feeling very much used. And here's my thing. I don't know what type of power Tamara has because the same way I was irritated with Shannon last season is the way that I'm irritated with Heather now because last season Heather last season Heather was on the outs because Shannon and Tamara decided to click up together and be friends all of a sudden and push push Heather out the group or out their little clique. Now it's flipped where it's Heather and Tamara are together and now they're pushing Shannon. And I don't know what type of power Tamara has where she is able to get both of these ladies to like go against themselves because all last season it made no sense to me why Shannon wanted to be friends with Tamara. After the display of like Venom, Tamara like displayed and spewed at Shannon all last season when she was reviewing the show or giving her thoughts on the show with Teddy on her podcast then we get to season seven and all of a sudden y'all friends and y'all clicked up now we're on season 18 and I'm looking at Heather like girl why would you want to be friends with either Shannon or Tamara because all last season they played in your face 
and was questioning your you as a friend and all of this stuff. And the issue is, is Shannon and, and Heather have never trusted each other. They have never really seen it for each other. And I think it makes it easier for Tamron to slither her way in and cause dissension between them. Because really... Even with the clips of the Jeff Lewis podcast, I was like, Heather, I kind of see what you're saying, but not totally. Like 10%, I get what you mean, but the other 90, no, sis. I just think you feel like you might, be, because you don't trust Shannon, you feel like you being used and you don't want to be played again like you were last season. So you're just kind of like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know why y'all trust Tamara because Tamara is nobody to trust. It's time for them to go to dinner. And we see them all sit down. And while they're at dinner, they bring up the whole mammogram situation because I think Gina, Emily, and Tamara talked about it. So then everyone's like, yeah, we're good. And then Tamara asks Heather, so how was yours? And Heather was like, oh, wow, thanks for asking because ain't nobody asked me that I went with. And everyone else is like, what you mean? And so Heather gets emotional where she talks about you know I, I have like a 40 percent more chance of getting breast cancer because of how dense my titties are because you can't be able to like detect it um Shannon's like girl I'm sorry because we thought we heard the yay and we thought she was good and she was like no the yay was for Gina and she was like it just would have been nice if someone would have asked me if I was okay so then Gina kind of has an attitude about it where she was like I don't get where Heather is coming from with this and so I just think Heather wants these ladies to care but she also doesn't want to act like she cares, which in turn is like a like it just leaves a problem because you're going to have to be vulnerable in front of people you don't trust. And she doesn't trust these women. Like, honestly, I think Heather knows that like none of these women are legit her friends like that, but she wants them to be in some capacity. But she knows she can't really trust them like she don't really she kind of don't really kick it with Jen and Katie like that. Um, her and Shannon have always been at odds with each other since they got on the show together like that. Emily and her have an up and down relationship the same way that she has with Gina. And now she kind of feels like Gina is like an opportunist. And then Tamara, Tamara is not to be trusted, but it's like that saying, keep your enemies close, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer because Everybody kind of knows that Tamara is the is is an unhinged individual. So I think Heather is just at this moment where she wanted everybody to care, but then she doesn't. And she also wanted some attention. So they move on from that point and they start talking about the Jeff Lewis situation. And pretty much Shannon feels like the girls are trying it right now, really coming at her throat. Tamara says she feels like Shannon was lying. She also says in her confessional, Shannon told her that J that John gave her that money for like a loan. And so she knows that um, Shannon is lying. Then Heather brings up how, you know, you were on the podcast talking about that situation where you didn't believe that you'd haven't thought about John and like the moments between, you know, the car, like, you know, the DUI situation, but then you came to my room where you were bloody and Shannon was like, are you seriously bringing this up right now? Like I, I came and talked to you to have like a moment, like a serious moment. Cause I needed to talk to somebody and you really throwing this like in my face like this. And I don't think Heather was prepared for Shannon's response because I, like I said, I don't think Heather has ever really trusted Shannon and I think she she really does feel like Shannon was trying to, like, use her. But her response, I think Heather was like, oh, I might have, like, this might not be the road that I should have went down on with her. Because she, now Shannon is feeling betrayed. You got Jen being like, well, this is making me feel like I can't call Heather for anything, especially if she going to throw this in her face. Because Jen is like, I think she wanted to talk to you because you were her friend. How do you feel like you're being used? And then Gina is like, yeah, this is like a serious situation. I think she just wanted to vent to everybody. And so Shannon gets frustrated. She starts getting emotional and getting worked up. Emily goes in the lawyer mode and starts asking, like, well, did you? get a promissory note did you get this did you get that and what I will say is I do feel like it was a dumb decision for Shannon to go on Jeff Lewis because now it does kind of have people people can go back and start like rewinding the tapes and comparing what you said on this show to that podcast and that can be used against you especially if y'all go to court with it you know what I'm saying and so it's just kind of like yeah I was lax on the interviews about the situation be like Karen Huger it's a legal matter I can't talk about it so 
Um, next thing you know, Shannon starts crying and, and getting all worked up. And then Tamara ends up being like, Shannon, you're not a victim. Like, so I don't even know why you acting this way. So then Shannon is like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. So she gets up from the table. Everyone's like, stop storming off. Like, where are you going? She's like, I'm going home. I'm going back to my room. And so she walks around the, the wall and it's a see-through wall and she's standing at the um, elevator. And so she turns around. She says, you know what, Tamara? I told you I'm not a victim victims don't are, are not proactive they just uh, allow everything to happen I'm being proactive I'm taking responsibility and then Tamara starts laughing in her face and I said girl if I was Shannon would have walked around and threw a drink in her face then would have walked out and so and she's she's like really Tamara you laughing in my face and Tamara's like I'm laughing because it looks like like you're yelling at me behind a wall and then Emily's like it does kind of look like you in jail and I said see Emily is the one that like y'all had all this smoke for Heather and Tamara last night but Emily was also egging this stuff on as well at that table so Gina goes and she tries to go get um tries to go get what's her name go get Shannon and, and calm her down before I talk about that we got a little more backstory about Katie and her mom we find out that her mom had her at like 15 and she was working at a factory she worked all the way up until like it was time for her to have the baby in the factory like she was actually worried about having the baby on the factory room floor and unfortunately um she realized like in three days like I cannot take care of this baby and She's just like, yeah, she gave me up for adoption. And Katie is just like, I want to meet my mom and let her know, like, she made the best decision. I had a, be a, a great life, but I just really want to meet her. So, again, I hope she's able to meet her mom, and I do hope that it is, a like, a positive experience like said, for her. Gina goes upstairs to figure out where Shannon is. And so Shannon is like, this is too much. Like, I'm really going through a girl, and it just feels like they're all coming at me. Like, they're just all coming at me. Like, she was like, I just feel so betrayed. I just still feel so and like, like, why would they betray? Like, why would Heather like betray me like this? And so, um, Shannon brings up how, you know, like all of this stuff with Alexis and everything. She said, I, I, you know how I told you, I knew she was the one that started the situation or she was in on the lawsuit with her ex-husband, uh, uh, against me and Tamara. And she said, you know what? She's been saying that she wasn't up, uh, uh, she wasn't a part of it. They even do a flashback to two months, um, later when, you know, Alexis does there the door, Shannon Bador. And she's like, no, like I definitely knew she was on it. And Alexis was like, where's the proof that I was a part of this lawsuit if you can find me court documents saying that I was a part of this lawsuit then there we have it but I didn't I wasn't a part of it well Shannon she said if she would have never texted Alexis she would have never been able to go back or or get the thought to go back in her text messages and find a text message that Alexis sent her so the text message it is dated um June the 27 2018 and says this Shannon everything you and Tamara have said in the media since the divorce are lies we have engaged you know engaged and an attorney and will be suing you and Tamara for slander and defamation your insensitive, um, insensitivities and false allegations came at a very difficult time for our family. And then they enlarge it because it goes on because it's pretty long. And where Shannon is like, she said, we, we like she was a part of the lawsuit. And so Gina is like, oh, girl. Ooh, girl. And so it the it, it continues by saying when you divorce, no, when you divorce, Jim and I left you alone and never said a negative thing in the media regarding you two. Just know that anything that you or Tamara um saying from I think it's supposed to be from now on, you will be um hearing from our attorney tomorrow, Alexis. So it's pretty much proof that Alexis was a part of the lawsuit against Jim, a lawsuit against her and um, Tamara. And then Gina's just like, so I guess the biggest liar out of the group is Alexis. And Gina was like, I've always believed that Shannon was telling the truth. And so Gina's like, what did Tamara say? So then I guess Shannon sent a screenshot of it to Alex, um, to Tamara of what Alexis said. And um, she sent back saying, OMG, I remember that I never got it because she didn't um have my number at the time so it's like girl what then it ends with heather being like no one likes being caught or maybe i should say a different term or something like that and so then the episode ends there 
y'all, that was the end. And I want to say this, just because a housewife has one bad episode, that does not mean the people need to be fired. Y'all kill me with that. Like I saw so many people being like, oh, it's time for Heather to go. It's time for Tamara to go. Y'all do understand that you can watch these shows and not like everybody. It's an ensemble cast. Like the purpose of this show is to watch these people have discourse. And also just because you don't like somebody doesn't mean you have to body shame them. Like I saw so many people going off on Heather calling her ugly. I saw people going off on Shannon because she made comments about Tamara's arms saying Shannon is a fat. I saw it's just like, okay, we like name calling is such an easy read and y'all really be like y'all tap into like the most juvenile things to say when you don't like a housewife and that's just crazy to me heather's not going anywhere okay heather heather and shannon out of this whole entire cast has the best job security y'all forget that they asked heather to come back she not going nowhere heather and shannon were the only two to film a wolverine and um deadpool commercial they not getting rid of heather and they shouldn't just because y'all are upset. But I do, again, I just want to know what type of power Tamara has because Tamara can make both Heather and Shannon look so stupid at times because that's the same way I felt like, again, the same way I felt about, about Heather in this moment where I'm just like, girl, why are you letting Tamara pump you up like this? Tamara did that to Shannon last season. So it's like, if you're going to be mad at Heather for succumbing to Tamara's, I don't know, powers be mad at shannon too because she looked stupid last season but that's my thoughts but as as a little as always that is it that is all remember to be bravely authentic and definitely hop down in the comments below and share your thoughts and i'm out y'all deuces